Good afternoon. This is Rich Nass with Open Systems Media, and I am here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. And this week I have the pleasure of speaking with Brad Walters, who is the CEO of Monit. Afternoon, Brad. How are you? Fine, Rich. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, before we start, I'd like to make sure everybody is familiar with Monit and what you guys do. So just give me the 30-second version of um, what the company is all about. Sure. Monit's a, a company that's been around for just over five years. Um, we consider ourselves a prominent player in the Internet of Things in that we supply devices that are touching the things. I like to say we're the first ones to touch the things in the Internet of Things. Specifically, we are a provider of low-cost wireless and control devices for uh, enterprise uh, customers looking to, to learn more about the things in their environment, be it a uh, refrigerator uh, that may, may be on the, on the blink that they need to know uh, that there's going to be an issue. Um, so our system would send them a text message uh, letting them know that that cooler is going down. And that's, that's a paramount uh, business um, uh, problem for, uh, for restaurant owners, for example. So Monit has about uh, 400 SKUs. We have over f uh, uh, 52 different types of sensors uh, with gateways and, and uh, software package that allows people to interact with their sensors. Um, and we do business around the world, and uh, uh, we're really excited about the opportunity to be involved in the Internet of Things. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so now the Internet of Things, it, it, I mean, obviously it means a lot of different things to different people, and it's shooting out in, into different directions. Um, and um, one of the things that that makes me think of is the people who are trying to put standards around it so devices can talk to devices uh, easily, you know, like Bluetooth, for example, you know, as a standard, you know, if it's all configured right, it should work right the first time. Um, is it possible to try to implement standards at this point in the game, or is, is it too late for that? You know, that's an awesome question, and, and, and we contemplate that a lot. Um, prior to this company, we had a company called MaxStream. We were one of the first players in the Zigbee space. We had the first Zigbee module called the XB on the market. And I spent a, a, an enormous amount of time involved with the uh, Zigbee Alliance and trying to gain an understanding of how uh, standards evolve and emerge and and, you know, bless their hearts, Zigbee's tried, but um, as an example, they've never been able to standardize, really, uh, um, uh, on, on a platform, if you will. Uh, you know, you've got the, the different folks that are trying to build their value around that. So, so I'm a little bit on the, on the side of it's going to be hard to create standards of the inter in the Internet of Things. That said, I'm uh, at the same time eagerly optimistic because I believe that business in general is transitioning with the Internet of Things. As we saw, uh, personally I started with IBM selling mid-range computers, moved into PCs and then network PCs and then the Internet and then mobile. And you, we've seen these transitions in the Internet of Things, or excuse me, in the um, IT industry. And this one, there's a whole new set of rules. So I do believe that as companies like ourselves and others evolve and uh, capitalize and, and frankly build war chest to be able to approach Congress and, or, or the FCC to change uh, radio standards and things to, to address the breadth and the depth of the Internet of Things. I do believe some standards will evolve, but they're going to be a, a different set of standards than, than we've seen in the past. So um, at the core, it's going to be difficult, but I think that there will be enough momentum to create standards. Um, I think that most standards will land in vertical markets. So temperature sensors for commercial refrigeration will have a set of standards in the Internet of Things. Um, tank monitoring in the industrial world will have a set of standards in the, in, in, in the Internet of Things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, as I said, with transition and maturity, um, uh, th there will be the ability, financial ability, to instill standards into this evolving industry. So does there need to be some sort of wall there between uh, when we talk about the consumer IoT and the industrial IoT, you know, do you want your Fitbit to be able, I mean, it's probably an extreme example, but um, to uh, be able to have a consumer device be working through the same standards as something that's on a factory floor or, or a, a hospital, for example? Or the, uh, uh, I, I do believe that. I do believe that, and I would segment it into one more area. I would say there's consumers. I would say there's enterprise, and then there's industrial. And I look at it from an RF or a radio perspective. The consumer world has adopted Wi-Fi 
and Bluetooth and always will. In the enterprise, those don't always work for a number of reasons, be it security, be it range, be it power consumption, et cetera. And so I believe that there will be standards within the enterprise realm. And that's, frankly, Monet's um, current core uh, focus. But then in industrial, that's compounded even more where you have intricacies around safety and, and, and uh, uh, explosion-proof housings and, and longer-term battery and longer-range RF. So I, I think you're right on spot there that, that, that the consumer, enterprise, and industrial will evolve almost their own subset of the Internet of Things. Okay. Well, it'll be an interesting road, and you are one of the people driving the bus, so uh, hopefully you'll make it happen. You know, I, I, we're, we're driving a bus that, that we, you know, on a periodic basis, we pull over on the side of the road and change the tires and, you know, fix the fan belt and, and, and just kick this thing down the road. But it's, it's an enormously exciting ride um, just because of the breadth and depth of the uses. Uh, this morning I took a call from a, a, a chain of uh, clinics in uh, the Midwest, uh, Botox clinics. And you never would have thought that they were going to be in the Internet of Things, but here they are. Botox chemicals have to be separated and, and, and cooled and then put together in a freezer. And this whole process requires meticulous monitoring of the temperature of, of, the, of, the, of the composition. And, um, and uh, just off the cuff, the office manager ordered you know, thousands of dollars of product to address their need that they had. Now, they don't know they're in the Internet of Things, but they are. Well, there are so many jokes to go with that, none of which are politically <laughs> correct. But unfortunately, we're out of time because we have Wonderful. to keep these interviews to five minutes. Understood. So that was Brad Walters. He is the CEO of Monet, and I am Rich Nass. I am the Executive Vice President of Open Systems Media. And that was this week's installment of Five Minutes With. Thank you very much, Brad. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate your time.